Welcome to content. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the capital structure. That is the debt to equity ratio. We're specifically going to look at how the capital structure affects the earnings per share and profitability. What is the capital structure? The capital structure is the allocation or combination of debt and equity that a firm uses to fund its operations and expansions. It is important for a company to establish the ideal capital structure in this, the company needs to manage its financial risk, which is related to the company's capital structure. Now, in finding the ideal capital structure, the company needs to ensure that the highest returns are attained for its shareholders, and at the same time, it's managing its financial risk. So let's take a look at a few examples. There are several approaches that are used to determine the ideal capital structure, one of which is the EBIT EPS approach, by EBIT, we mean the earnings before interest and tax, and EPS is short for earnings per share. In our example, owner's equity and long-term debt are used in varying proportions. So let's take a look at the first example. Case number one, conservative form of capital structure. Our debt to equity ratio is zero is to 1,000 rand. That means we have zero debt and equity worth 1,000 rand. We are told that this 1,000 rand comprises of 50 shares, so let's see, owner's equity, 50 shares of 20 rand each, gives us 1,000 rand, and the weighting is 100% because we have no debt at all. Long-term debt, it's at 18%, this is an assumption we are making, and we have no debt, so it's a 0%, and total long-term capital employed, we have 1,000 rand, and it's 100%. So here we must remember that equity is 100%, we have no debt at all. So let's see the effect of this on profitability and earnings per share. Apart from the possible payment of income tax, the firm would not be required to service any financial obligations from earnings before interest and tax. That is interest payments. We don't have to pay any interest payments because we have no long-term debt at all. Therefore, should risks cause fluctuations in earnings before interest and tax in this situation, the firm would remain fairly liquid because we have no obligations in terms of interest payments. So, let's see how this works. This is, sh this is shown below assuming earnings before interest and tax were 150 Rand and the tax rate was 50% for the sake of simplicity. So, this is how it would look, the snippet of the statement of comprehensive income. We have earnings before interest and tax of 150 Rand. Less interest on long-term debt, it's zero because we have no debt. And then the profit before tax is 150 Rand less tax at 50 percent which is 75 rand and earnings after interest and tax or the net profit or profitability is 75 rand and this is accruing to the ordinary shareholders so this is the profitability which will be for the ordinary shareholders now how much is the earnings per share we now calculate the earnings per share which is 75 rand divided by 50 issued shares remember at the beginning we had said that the 1000 rand comprised of 50 shares so 75 rand divided by 50 shares gives us 150. Therefore, for a debt to equity ratio or capital structure of 0% and earnings before interest and tax of 150 rand, earnings per share is 150 cents. So you can see in this situation, we have no long-term debt at all. Now we look at the same example, but with a mixture of both debt and equity. But before we do that, let's look at the situation where our earnings before interest and tax doubled to 300 rand earnings before interest and tax 300 rand less interest and long-term debt which we do not have any so it's zero and then profit before tax 300 rand still and then less tax at 50 percent we have 150 rand which is for taxation and earnings after interest and tax or the profit is 150 rand now that will be shared among our ordinary shareholders so what is our earnings per share we now calculate the earnings per share, which is 150 Rand, divided by 50 issued shares, equals 3 Rand. Therefore, for a debt to equity ratio or capital structure of 0% and earnings before interest and tax of 300 Rand, earnings per share is 3 Rand. So by doubling the earnings before interest and tax, the EPS or the earnings per share has doubled. So this is a situation where we have no debt at all. Now let's go to case number two, a fairly aggressive form of capital structure by fairly aggressive we mean there's an introduction of debt here we are told that the debt to equity ratio is 30 percent in other words the debt will be 300 rand and the equity will be 700 rand 
this for a capital structure of 1000 rand total we are told here it's 20 rand per share so owner's equity is 35 shares at 20 rand per share which, which is 700 rand divided by 20 rand gives us 35 shares so it's 35 shares at 20 rand per share and the total there is 700 rand and we have long term debt at 18% interest of 300 rand gives us a total long term capital employed of 1000 rand so the weighting there is 70% for owner's equity and long term debt 30% weighting it gives us 100% so now let's look at the same scenario in the snippet of the income statement or the statement of comprehensive income and let's see the effect on profitability and EPS when we introduce a debt so now the financial obligation of paying interest has arisen because we have long-term debt in our capital structure. The earnings before interest and tax, like in the beginning, 150 rand, and less interest, 18% of 300 rand. Remember, now that we have a long-term debt, we need to pay interest on that. So we take 18% of 300 rand, which was the long-term debt, it gives us 54 rand. And then profit before tax, it's earnings before interest and tax minus interest gives us 96 rand. And then we deduct the tax at 50%, gives us a total of 48 rand. And then earnings after interest and tax, the profitability accruing to ordinary shareholders becomes 48 rand. So the earnings, the earnings per share arising in this instance is 48 rand divided by 35 issued shares, which we are told here, 35 shares is 1 rand 37 cents therefore for a debt to equity ratio or capital structure of 30 percent and earnings before interest and tax of 150 rand earnings per share is 1 rand 50, 1 rand 37 cents the earnings per share is lower than in case one which we looked at and the firm has taken on the additional risk of paying interest on the long-term loan no matter what the earnings before interest and tax is so there is an additional risk which is being taken by the company regardless of how it performs in terms of its profitability. So let's continue. Let's see what happens when earnings before interest and tax increases to 300 rand in this situation. Remember in the previous situation where we had no debt, we also looked at EBIT increasing uh, or doubling to 300 rand. So earnings before interest and tax is 300 rand less interest. 18% of 300 rand. Note that that does not change because the rate does not change. It's 54 rand. And then profit before taxes, 246 rand, which is 300 rand, known as 54 rand. And then less tax at 50%, which is 123 rand. And then earnings after interest and tax or profitability accruing to ordinary shareholders is equals to 123 rand. So now let's see what is the effect of the earnings per share. We now calculate the earnings per share, which is 123 rand, divided by the 35 issued shares, it gives us a total of 3 rand 51 cents. Therefore, for a debt to equity ratio or capital structure of 30% and earnings before interest and tax of 300 rand, earnings per share is 3 rand 51 cents. So by doubling the earnings before interest and tax and the EPS, uh, sorry, by doubling the earnings before interest and tax, the earnings per share has more than doubled. Remember, in the first situation where we are not we are not debt, the earnings per share just doubled. But here, but here it has more than doubled. In the previous situation, it was three rand. Now it's three rand fifty one cents. So you need to note too that the earnings per share from a capital structure of seventy percent. So owner's equity and thirty percent debt structure is higher than the EPS of three rand in case one, which we looked at. By using the debt capital in its capital structure. The firm has levered up its earnings per share from 3 rand in case 1 to 3 rand 51 cents in case 2. And you may ask the question, why is that the case? That once we have introduced debt, we have a higher earnings per share when our earnings before interest and tax doubles. Well, here are a few things to note. Our interest rate remains at 18% regardless of the changes in earnings before interest and tax. That's one thing to note. And also... Our capital structure or our equity is no longer 50 shares but only 35 shares. Remember, we reduce our share, shareholding by 15, 15 shares because in the beginning it was 50 shares but now it's only 35 shares. 
And the reason for that is because we used debt instead of selling shares. So by having fewer shares in issue, we are able to share a, that amount of profit amongst fewer shareholders. I hope that makes sense. We take this amount here and share it amongst fewer shareholders. That is what it means. And that is how capital structure affects our profitability and earnings per share. Remember, earnings per share is always affected when your capital structure changes. The main reason is because of interest payments that is there when we have debt. And the second thing is that our equity holders or our shareholders will change. They will either increase or decrease depending on what we do. If we introduce more debt, then we don't need to issue more shares. So our shareholding might decrease. I hope that has made sense. And it has helped. If you have gained value from this lesson, if you have learned something, please consider subscribing to our channel and liking our video. And if you have any questions or queries, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time. Cheers.